come and worship with us at Green Pastures and Liberation Ministry, number 71 Umora Street, Uyo, Akwaibum State. Days of activities, Mondays, interdenominational service and strategic intercession and deliverance service. Time, 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Wednesdays, midweek service, word and healing service. Time, 5.30 p.m. Sundays, Holy Ghost and Revival Service. Time, 8 a.m. Communion, healing and deliverance service on second Sundays of the month. Time, 8 a.m. First Saturdays of the month. First oil and importation service. Time, 7 a.m. Third Fridays, deliverance night. Time, 10 p.m. till dawn. Come and pray until something happens. Jesus is Lord. You are God from beginning to the end. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Father, we give you thanks. Welcome to another encounter with God. It's another time of fellowship. This is a moment of liberation, a moment of freedom. It's a time God wants to speak to you. It's a time God wants to reach out to somebody. God wants to bring his blessings. He wants to bring revival. He wants to bring deliverance. He wants to bring healing upon someone. I bring you greetings from heaven. Greetings from the church. and Greetings from this altar. I want you to bow your heart. Even as we go into prayer. Father we give you thanks. Give you glory. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for all that you've been doing. Thank you for what you will do again. Let the entrance of the world bring life. And let it bring understanding unto the simple. And so shall it be in Jesus name. I'll be taking my text or reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 23 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 23 verse 4. It says, Be thou ashamed, O Zadon, for the sea hath spoken, even the strength of the sea, saying, I travel not, nor bring forth children, neither do I nourish up young men, nor bring up virgins. He said, Be thou ashamed, O Zidon, for the sea hath spoken. I want to speak on the topic briefly that says, Addressing the voice of the waters. Addressing the voice or the speakings of the waters. From the text, We've read it shows that water can speak the sea can speak the sea has a voice the sea can talk uh, well i don't know that's like personification and um, giving human attribute to an inanimate object how does the sea speak the bible says here in verse 4 be thou ashamed o zidon for the sea had spoken. The voice of the sea can be heard by many, can be heard by families, can be heard by people. There are people that the sea speaks to on daily basis. Some of them, the sea speaks to them in the night, it speaks to them in the dreams. They are confronted by the voice of the water. They're confronted by the voice of the sea. The Bible says, Be thou ashamed, O Zidon, for the sea hath spoken. And I pray today that the sea, the voice of the sea, will no more be heard in thy land. There are people that are confronted by the torrents and by the powers of the water. The water speaks against them. It speaks against their marriage. It speaks against their endeavors. It speaks against their labor. It speaks against their profit. It speaks against everything they stand for and they live for. That every day, the water speaks into your life. It speaks into your home. It speaks in the life of your children. It speaks in your academics. It speaks in everything that you ever live for in life. You need to understand the dimension of the speakings of the water. What does the water speak? What does the sea speak? The Bible says even the strength of the sea saying, I travel not. The sea says, I travel not. 
That's the first thing it speaks. He says, nor bring forth children. He says, I won't bring forth children. It kills children. It holds children. It rubbishes children. It makes children to be stranded. He said, nor bring forth children. That, neither do I nourish up young men. See where the sea contends and speaks against young men? It doesn't nourish. It doesn't bring good things in the life of young men. There are communities, there are cities, the environment where the life of the young men is being regulated by the power of the sea and by the speakings of the sea. It speaks them into waywardness. It speaks them into robbery. It speaks them into banditry. It speaks them into evil and all kinds of things. You say, uh, and not bring up virgins. Not bring up virgins. The sea says, I can't bring virgins. I bring people that are disvirgent. The sea didn't cooperate with the virgins. It began to speak. Now, that is the central and the background scripture for our working tonight. As we move into other scriptures to portray the topic of the night. When the water speaks, you need to silence the voice of the sea. You need to contend with the sea and make the sea not to speak against you. We're going to see people that the sea spoke against. Why will the sea need to be addressed? You see something happened in the land of Egypt in the book of Exodus chapter 8 verse 20. In Exodus chapter 8 verse 20, God spoke clearly to Moses and gave him instruction. In Exodus chapter 8 20, he says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh, not behind him, not by him. Stand before Pharaoh, face to face. You need to confront Pharaoh. And this he was to do very early in the morning. He said, Rise up in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. You understand that the power of Egypt was rooted in the water. Pharaoh was a worshiper of the spirit of the water. And this he did every morning. And God wanted to show Moses the secret of Pharaoh. And said very early in the morning he need to go to the water to pay obeisance. And begin to consult the spirit in the water. And said Moses, there's a place I want you to confront him. Move to the waters and confront him and speak to him. That if he does not let my people go, I will command hell, I will command frog. I'll command strange manifestations upon the land of Egypt. So Moses went and confronted him in the sea, confronted him by the water where he normally goes for his consultation. Listen to me, you, you, you need to address, God will need you to address the marine environment, the water environment, the speakings of the water, their altars, their powers, their thrones that are controlled from the water and um, we see pharaoh he knew his source he knew where his altar was and he knew where his office was and pharaoh was controlling egypt and he was addressing the affairs of the nation from the altar in the water from the marine environment uh, you may not really understand this but when you look at ezekiel the book of ezekiel the bible says something something particular in the book of ezekiel ezekiel chapter 29 the book of ezekiel chapter 29 as we read verse 2 downward he says son of man set thy face against pharaoh king of egypt and prophesy against him and against all egypt verse 3 he said speak and say thus saith the lord god behold i am against thee pharaoh king of egypt the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which had said, My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. The Bible tells us something about Pharaoh here. He said, He says, Say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers. Now, the Bible makes us to understand that Pharaoh was not just a king. Pharaoh was not just a ruler, that Pharaoh was a dragon. 
and that Pharaoh lived in the water in the midst of his river the Bible says that was his house that was his altar the Pharaoh we saw on the throne of Egypt was the titular Pharaoh but the main Pharaoh was the dragon the spirit of Egypt and that's the Pharaoh he used to go and meet in the Red Sea for consultation no wonder he was an hardened spirit there are kings there are presidents that take instruction from the waters they take instruction from the marine altars they take instruction from the marine kingdom now one of the things you understand about the marine spirit is that it's a spirit that is very stubborn it's a rebellious spirit it's a very stubborn spirit in the rank of the spirit marine witchcraft marine witchcraft these are stubborn spirit and uh, and pharaoh was operating in the spirit of stubbornness why now we come to know by the prophet ezekiel and ezekiel in the prophetic discovered that this pharaoh was a dragon that lied in the midst of his rivers he was he was not living on the throne that was his his his, his protege that was the man that he was using to control the affairs of egypt listen to me the powers the, the marine environment can have a representative on the throne they can have a representative in the government that steers the affairs of a nation and he rules the nation from the marine perspective he rules the nation from the marine world rules the nation from the marine kingdom there are authorities there are powers that operate from the from the altars in the water so god told moses he said god they confront him silent him because he rules this kingdom from the water and here ezekiel is telling us that god says that this man the great dragon he lived in the midst of his rivers that's where he lived that's where he stayed that was his office and there are powers that operate from the office there are powers that operate from the office in the water they operate from the from the from the domain of the sea they speak from the sea their instruction their charge is from the water they speak to the nations they speak to the citizens they speak to the people they speak to their subject from the uh, from the domain of the water so the bible says say unto pharaoh that great dragon that liveth in the midst of his river he said i'm against him you see the psalmist give us another overview here the psalmist shows us something in psalm 74 verse 13. the psalmist by the spirit of god and by the spirit of revelation god showed him how the children of israel marched out of egypt how they came out of the the, the the realm of the sea the realm of the water in psalms chapter 74 verse 13 the bible says thou didst divide the sea by thy strength thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters thou didst divide the sea by thy strength thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters and you made the people to go through a dry land how did they cross the sea you know pharaoh knew that there is nowhere the children of israel will go through the sea because the river was his as we have seen in ezekiel chapter 29 verse 3 he was already there in the river as a dragon so he laughed and said how will they go but look at what god did that aspect is not stated as they cross the red sea all we know about is that there was a strong southeast wind that blew into the sea and parted the river into two but here david by the spirit of god gives us a deeper revelation of how the deliverance of the children of israel took place he said thou didst divide the sea by thy strength and that's by the strength of the the, the wind thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters listen to me god needed to address the heads of the dragons the powers in the waters the marine powers that did not want the children of israel to cross the residential forces in the waters of egypt these were the powers that wanted to lock them into egypt but the bible says according to david 
that God broke and destroyed the heads of the dragons. One of the dragons was the dragon Pharaoh, as we have seen in Ezekiel chapter 29, verse 3. This is the spirit that is against crossover. Listen to me. If you must cross over in life, then you must cooperate with God to address the heads of the dragons in the waters. You must address the constitution of darkness in the water. There are powers of the water that can lock up a nation, they can lock up a people, can lock up a community, can lock up a village, can lock up a tribe, can lock up a country. I came to address every heads of dragons in the water, in the water of your father's house, in the waters of your mother's house, in the waters of this city, in the waters of this land. Every water, that every dragon that is living in the river, that living in the sea of a family, that locks up a people, lock up them maritally, lock up them and does not allow their destiny to break out by the authority that is in the name of Jesus, I command in the name of Jesus, let the heads of the dragons of your father's house that sit in the waters of your house, let their heads be broken so that you can cross over. Let there be a crossover for somebody. Let there be a passage for somebody where you were locked. You could not enter the other side of life. You could not enter the other side of destiny. You could not enter the other side of your prophecy by the authority that is in the name of Jesus, the same way that God broke the heads of the dragons. I speak into your life and I dress your waters. Let the dragons that hold your life captive, let their heads be broken. So God fought the waters so that they could go through. The people listening to me, the waters kill you. Come on it. I see a lot of persons. It's a pastor, man of God. All right, each time I sleep, I see a river appear. I'm going somewhere in my dream, and a river appears and blocks the road, and I cannot pass. Listen to me. Listen to me. The powers of the dragons of the water, the spirit of the water that seated over you, that seated in your life, the spirit that denies you the other side of life by the power that is in the name of Jesus. That river is dried up. The dragons dried up. The heads of forces of darkness in the water that hold your life and family we bring them to destruction tonight in the name of Jesus so that's how they went through these two these scriptures we have seen reveals that the sea was addressed before the children of Israel could pass you need to address your water you need to address the, the, the marine world you need to address the kingdom of the sea because the whole nations the whole prophecies the whole dreams the whole visions the whole aspirations they hold a lot of things concerning people to ransom and they don't allow the people to cross over but today by the power of the holy ghost i decree and declare in the name of jesus that that water comes to a standstill in the book of john chapter 1 sorry in the book of jonah in the book of jonah chapter one the bible says something in jonah chapter one i think uh, we can see that in verse five jonah chapter one verse five verse 11 to 12. verse five says then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his god and cast forth the ways that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them but jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and lay down and was fast asleep verse 11 says then said they unto him what shall we do unto thee that the sea may become unto us for the sea wrought and was tempestuous and he said unto them take me up and cast me forth into the sea so shall the sea be calm so shall the sea become unto you for i know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you jonah knew now the sea can make a demand the sea can speak now these people were on a voyage they were on a journey 
in the river and the sea stood up and spoke against that journey the sea spoke against that ship and threatened the life of the people in the ship the bible says they began to lose their ways they threw some of their properties they threw some of their furnitures into the water listen to me the sea can speak against your property the sea can speak against your blessings it can speak against your wealth it can speak against your riches the sea made these people to lose property therefore we can say that the power of the sea can sponsor losses it can sponsor losses family blessings you can lose your property to the power of the water you can lose your wealth you can lose destiny you can lose favor you can lose all that you have labored for the good things that were in the ship because the sea was crying the sea was looking for something so they removed their properties and dashed the water ah when they discovered that there was a man by reason of this attack by the water they said they came to him and they said ah what do we do unto you he said ah the only thing you can do unto me is that threw me into the water the sea is looking for me it's looking for me and somebody listening to me ah the sea may be looking for you the powers of the water may be looking for your children they'll be looking for the anointing in your life they may be looking for the gift of god in you they may be looking for your calling they may be looking for your ministry the power of the water may be looking for your pregnancy they may be looking that is why every four months when you see the water when that spirit husband comes to have an affair with you suddenly the pregnancy disappears you you carry it and everybody sees and once this man appears a lot of things goes off come on there is a strong man that must be addressed the power of the water may be speaking looking for something in your life so the bible says john has said throw me out when you throw me the sea shall be calm there are seas that are ready to be calm if they get what they are looking for why is the sea speaking because this is looking for something but i pray for somebody listening to me whatever the water is looking for from your life by the power of the holy ghost i command the water to be silent let the water be silent in the book of mark chapter 4 if you read down from verse 22 in mark 4 from 22 down the bible says when jesus entered the ship and he was about to row to the other side because by the spirit of prophecy jesus was crossing to the other side of the gatherings why did he want to go to the gathering because the grandchild of jacob the grandchild of jacob remember when jacob was giving prophecy of his children he said god oh a troop shall overtake thee but in the end thou shall overtake the troop a troop a, the word troop is the same interpretation as legion as legion as legion that is the same interpretation and jesus was going to deliver the great grandson of abraham he was going to bring salvation to the grandchild of abraham and this man was possessed by demon spirit he was living in the tomb and while jesus was going in the sea to cross over to the gathering and deliver the man the bible says the wind broke out and entered the sea and the sea arose against Jesus and the Bible says the water filled the boat about to sink them and Peter cried out master perish thou not we perish he went and woke him up the Bible says and Jesus woke up and said you see where were you when I created you you power of darkness where were you when I created the waters how dare you the river for you to speak against me how dare you to stop my mission how dare you to kill me before my assignment is accomplished how dare you to look after to stop my journey to make my journey crumble halfway how dare you water where were you the Bible says he stood up and spoke to the sea and said, Peace be still. Sir, don't allow the water to speak against you anymore. Jesus understood that what the sea was doing was a communication, that the sea was speaking negatively. He arose against the powers of the water and said, Enough is enough. Today, I pray for you. I pray for this land. I pray for this city. I pray for this state. I pray for my listener. I pray for a church. I pray for a family i pray for a woman that the power of the water is threatening that the sea is speaking against you 
every night you sleep the altars in the water rise and communicate and speak against you by the authority that is in the name of Jesus I command the speakings of the water expire let it expire the Bible says Jesus spoke to the water and that was the end the sea couldn't speak again in the Bible says in 2nd Kings as we bring a message to an end in 2nd Kings chapter 6 the Bible tells us something that happened in verse 4 as we read 2nd Kings chapter 6 from verse 4 so he went with them and when they came to Jordan they cut down wood but as one was filling a beam the axe head fell into the water and he cried and said alas master it was borrowed this man borrowed an axe head to go into the expansion of the gospel to 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 expand the house for them to in you know to add more building and increase the size of the building where they were worshiping the bible says prophet elisha went with them oh god bless him he carried elisha you you may need to carry your prophet along because you don't know what is happening in front of you the power of the water may want to threaten oh your labor may want to threaten your sacrifice this man borrowed money he borrowed an axe he went and began to cut the tree as he was cutting the bible says the axe head fell it fell into river Jordan. Why didn't the axe head fall somewhere and went and stayed in the water? A lot of people have lost destinies to the water. You have lost your strength to the power of the water. You have lost pregnancies to the power of the water. This man borrowed a lot of persons that borrowed money into business. They have lost the capital and the profit and the bank is after you. The creditors have come after you. Why? Because the water has threatened your labor, has threatened your investment the man cried out alas master it was borrowed nobody knew that he borrowed the axe to come and do the work he was shining oh come on a lot of people that borrowed the water disgraced them and exposed them the man confessed to the prophet he said master alas let me tell you this was borrowed what do i do the water has sent me empty the water has stopped the work of a lot of people this man stopped the work he couldn't work again i speak to that altar the altars in the water that has stopped your work you cannot continue you have stopped have where the pregnancy is no more growing it has become stunted life destiny is paralyzed because the foundation of marine has spoken has challenged you and has stopped you have where i come in the volume of the books as it is written of me and i address every water that has silenced you the water that stopped you have where the water that said you should not continue by the authority in the name of jesus I command your work to continue. Bible says Elisha came and said, Where did it fall? He said, It fell here. This is the place. You must know where it fell. You must know where the enemy crippled you. You must know the place. Elisha went and spoke to the water. He addressed the water and said, Water, vomit the axe head. Give back to this man what you took from the man. I speak to somebody listening to me what the water took from you the water took your pregnancy the water stole your marriage the spirit husband scattered your marriage it scattered your relationship ah today by the power of the holy ghost i command in the name of jesus all that the water swallowed whatever is spoke against you i address the water i address the water of your land i address the water of your losses where you lost your business where you lost your strength where you lost your axe head where you lost your glory where you lost your honor let there be a restoration let the water vomit it back thank you holy spirit Father, I give you praise. Tonight, I give you glory. I address waters. I address the water of this land. The water that has crippled this state. The waters, the power of the waters. The altars of the waters. The spirit of the waters that have spoken against the, the, this land. The spirit of Ibom. The spirit of Anaconda. I command the heads of the dragons. The heads of demons. The altars in the waters that have threatened the blessings of the people. That have silenced the people by the power in the name of jesus whatever you lost to the water 
let the water give it to you now as you sleep in your dream you will see your properties back the water will push it to you the marine world will send them back i command your blessings to be restored elisha said to him take he took it and he continued work so shall it be unto you thank you father for in jesus name we pray god bless you dear listener this is the voice of your brother epidemi manuel I am a pastor, the pastor of Green Pastures and Liberation Ministry, number 71, Umorin Street, in the city of Uyo, Aquaibom State. Green Pastures and Liberation Ministry, 71, Umorin Street. You can reach us on 080 080-8142-7769. That line will be open in the next 20 minutes. God bless you. You can reach us. The Lord bless you till I come your way, same time on Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. Bye for now. You are God. Come and worship with us at Green Pastures and Liberation Ministry, number 71 Umore Street, Uyo, Aquaibum State. Days of activities, Mondays, interdenominational service and strategic intercession and deliverance service. Time, 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Wednesdays, midweek service, word and healing service. Time, 5.30 p.m. Sundays, Holy Ghost and Revival service. Time, 8 a.m. Communion, healing and deliverance service on second Sundays of the month. Time. 8 a.m. First Saturdays of the month. First oil and importation service. Time 7 a.m. Third Fridays. Deliverance night. Time 10 p.m. till dawn. Come and pray until something happens. Jesus is Lord. You are God from beginning to the end.